here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Trying to get on the prayer line. Can you hear me? Thank you for joining us in prayer. Please enter your conference ID and press the sound key. The conference will begin when the next one starts. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I pray that you can hear me. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Praise the Lord, Lady Deary. Praise the Lord, Brother Terry. Man, good to see you. Praise the Lord, Elder Shepherd. Minister Josette. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone that is on. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Yes, you can hear me. Amen. God, good, good. Amen. I feel like I'm a little low, but amen. Waiting for people to get on the prayer line. Amen. We, I pray that everyone had, amen, a blessed day. Um, amen. And the, the mercy and the grace of God. Uh, brought us through another day and uh, we're grateful praise the Lord Brother Denny amen, amen, God bless you sir we praise God for everyone that is on the prayer line amen, let's just quickly go into a word of prayer Father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this day we thank you for all that you've done for us you've blessed us you've kept us You've let your grace and your angel of protection keep us all day long. And for God, we're there to say thank you. We've come to tell you thank you. For without you, where would we be? Without you, we can do nothing. We ask for your presence tonight in this Bible study, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that your word will break yokes and destroy everything that is not like you in the mighty name of Jesus. And that you will encourage us, encourage our hearts with this thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You good? Amen. Tonight, amen, we are thankful. Amen. For all that God has done for us. Twenty twenty two for some of us has not went the way we had expected it. It has not started in the way that we wanted it to. But one thing we do know, and that is that our God is faithful. And he has shown himself to be faithful even in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our tests, in the midst of our sicknesses, in all that we've gone through. Amen. In these first first 18 days of the new year. Amen. God has shown himself faithful. And just for that, if you don't mind, just go up there and throw some a hand praise up there just to give our God a praise. Amen. For showing himself faithful. Amen. Um, tonight, amen, I want to just come from the book of Colossians. I just want to talk tonight from the book of Colossians, if you don't mind. Amen, Lady Deary. Amen. 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 Sister Mahogany, that's right. Just throw a hand praise up to God. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to 
just talk to you from the book of Colossians. I, I, Colossians is one of my favorite books because I, when I read the writings of Paul in the book of Colossians, uh, he, he, he writes to the church because of what was going on because of the false teachers. Amen. Praise the Lord, Pastor Deary. Amen. God bless you, sir. Uh, he was he was writing to the church because of the false teachings that was trying to infiltrate the church. And Paul wrote this book because he wanted the believers, and as he says in verse number two, we're going to look at Colossians chapter one, chapter one, and we'll see how far we get with chapter one. But he wanted the, the saints or the faithful brethren that is in Christ. He wanted them to know, and he wants us to know, the preeminence of Christ. He wants us to know that there is no other God but the God that we serve. He wants us to know, amen, that Jesus is preeminent. He's supreme. Uh, he's, that's why we call him Lord of Lord and King of Kings, because there's none like him. And praise the Lord, amen, uh, Prayer line, if you don't mind, please uh, mute your phone. Amen. There's none like our God. There's none like Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Paul wanted us to know this. But in chapter number one, Paul, I could, I, and as I was reading chapter one, I could feel the heart of Paul. And that's what I want to talk to uh, talk on tonight. The subject, the heart of the church. The heart of the church. If somebody don't mind typing that in, just type that in for me. The heart of the church. Amen. In Paul's writing, he man, he writes to a man to the church and he says in verse number two, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what blew my mind as I was reading it. And I've read this many times over and over. In verse number three, he says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the key. Praying always for you. And that's where I got the subject, the heart of the church. Because as the body of Christ, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, amen, we have a responsibility one to another, amen. It goes upward and it goes across, amen. So we have a responsibility to God and we have a responsibility to one another. And I notice what Paul says. He says, um, I give thanks to God. So it, that tells me that all of us that are in Christ, that are part of the body of Christ, we ought to thank God for each one of us, for each of us. Amen. We ought to thank God. Amen. Why? Because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We ought to thank God for each other because, amen, we, we, we understand and we have partaken in the Christ event. In other words, we have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I'm thankful to God for his saving power because he not only saved me, but he also saved you. You see what I'm saying? The heart of the church. The heart of the church is thankful for that, for all of those or all of us that have been saved and that are saved and sanctified. God just didn't only die for me. He died for the whole world. And everyone that partakes or that are partakers of the new birth, amen, we ought to be thankful that they are part of the body of Christ. And now that we are all part of the body of Christ, our responsibility is to pray always for one another. Somebody shout, pray for me. Somebody pray, type in there, pray for me, pray for me. Amen. Uh, I, I, I remember, amen, uh, um, uh, Minister uh, Elizabeth, not Minister Elizabeth, but Minister Allen. 
She always talks about how somebody prayed for her. Amen. And that, that's, that's important. That's important. Amen. That we constantly pray one for another. Because as part of the body of Christ, all of us are facing the same adversary. The devil is not only out to get, get me, but he's out to get everybody that is a connected to the body of Christ. Therefore, it's our responsibility, it's my responsibility, it's your responsibility to pray one for another. Amen. I don't want to see the devil take you out to church. No, no. Because I want you to be partakers of the blessings of God. And I want you to be partakers of, of eternal life. Amen. None of us wants to be, wants to be uh, living in hell. None of us wants to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want the devil taking you out. I don't want the devil destroying your household or destroying your marriage or destroying your children. Because I don't want him to, I'm going to continually keep you in prayer. And I ask you to do the same for me because, amen, because we have been, because we are the body of Christ. We are the partakers of the goodness of God. So notice Paul says, I hope you have your Bibles and turn with me to Colossians. He says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. He didn't say he's, he didn't say sometimes praying, but he says always pray. Amen. We have to always pray one for another. The scripture lets us know, amen, that the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And we must understand, even as the song says in, the, in Zion Church and Z, Jesus Christ sings, amen, this means war. We are in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle for, one, for our homes. We're in a spiritual battle for our unsaved loved ones. You, we're in a spiritual battle for one another. I love you. And I pray that you love me. Therefore, I'm going to always pray for you that the devil, he will never, he will, though he will form the weapon, but that the weapon will not prosper. Hmm. Yes. Uh, the heart of the church. Oh, uh, the church, the, the, the body of Christ. We, we all are partakers of the body of Christ. We, he has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And you are, as I said before, you are my brother. You are my sister. I'm so thankful that God has saved you. I'm so thankful that he pulled you out of what you were bound by. He pulled you out of drugs. He pulled you out of hormone. He, he pulled, whatever he pulled you out of, I'm thankful because all of us, amen, are partakers of the blessings of God. Come on, just put those, throw some more hand praises in there. Amen. So Paul says, uh, verse number three, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Now notice what he says, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Now that's two parts. Did you catch that? He, he's praying since he heard, I'm praying for you. Why? Because I know that you are my brother, you are my sister, and since you are part of the body of Christ, I know that your faith is in Christ. Yes. And since your faith is in Christ, I don't want nothing, amen, to turn your faith away from Christ. Because, because as the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Amen. I want all of us, the church, amen, to be a connected group. We must be a connected group. We must know, uh, we must have faith in Christ. And notice what he says, and have love, which you have love for all the saints. 
none of us have time to be jealous of one another, uh, envious of somebody's gift, um, or, or talking about one another. We are the body of Christ. Amen. We are all one body. Christ is the head and we are the body. Therefore, since we are the body of Christ, as I said before, we ought to be connected in prayer and in love. Yes, yes. We ought to be connected where, where nothing can come between us. Why? Because we have God down on the inside of us and he has given us power to overcome anything that comes up against us. Notice, that's why he said, since I heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, faith in Christ. In other words, my faith in Christ means that I trust Christ. I, nothing that I go through in this life will turn my faith away from Christ because I know what he has done and I know that what he has done, he's able to do in the future and in the present. Therefore, my faith or my trust in Christ has got to be firm. It's got to be steadfast. Can't let nothing waver. I cannot let, not, I cannot let my faith waver. I have to trust in God no matter what we go through. We have to trust in Christ. No matter what we go through. Now I know there has been, there are, we're, we're all going through some difficult times in these first 18 days of this new year. The things that, that my household is going through, I did not anticipate. But even though we're going through it, my faith in Christ will never waver. My trust in God will never waver. As a tree planted by the rivers of water, I'm not going to be moved. Why? Because my faith in Christ has shown me in the past what he can do. Therefore, if he's done it before, I know he can do it again. But as the Hebrew boys say, but if not, I know he's able. I know he's able. Therefore, I'm going to trust in him as long as I live. Amen. So he says, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. That's why. Now, that's where the prayer comes in. I pray for you. We pray one for another because we love one another. We pray for all saints because we love all the saints. No, did you catch that? Because we are all, as I said before, we are all one body. Jesus is the head and we are the body. Therefore, if I'm connected to the head as the body, then I have to exemplify what the head has shown. I've got to lead or, or follow what the head leads me. Amen. And so when we look at what Jesus did while he walked on, on this earth, he loved, he had compassion, uh, he prayed, uh, he, he did all kinds of miracles. So if the head does it and he has given the body power, that tells us what? That we can do it also. Somebody type amen in there. We can do it also. Amen. Amen. So he says in verse 5, for the hope, he says, verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bring forth fruit as it doeth also in you since the days ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Now here's where I want to go. Verse, beginning at verse number 9. Paul here, this is where I got really got the heart, the, the subject, the heart of the church. Because beginning in verse number 9 through verse 14, Paul is praying for the church. He is praying for the church at Colossae, and he's praying for you and me, which is now the future church. 
Amen. He's praying for us. Notice what he says. He says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Do you see the depthness of, of, of what we should be praying for as saints of God, one for another? Amen. We should not cease to pray because why? Because we should have the desire for all of us to grow deeper in God, to grow deeper in the knowledge of God and his and the understanding of God. And the only way that we can do that is through prayer and reading the word of God. Amen. So I'm praying for you that when you read the word of God, when you open up that Holy Bible and begin to read, that God will reveal to you his wisdom and give you deeper understanding of who he is. Oh, God. Because there is higher heights and deeper depths where? In Christ Jesus. I got to stand up. I'm getting a little excited. I got to stand for a minute. So, so, so when, you, when you pray for me, amen, pray, amen, that that God will give me revelation knowledge, like I will pray for you, that he will give you deeper understanding of his will and deeper knowledge of who he is. We're always, as long as we're in this world, and as long as we're reading the word of God, there are, there are time, there are abilities for us to grow in God. We don't know it all. We will never know the whole thing of God. But what we can do, amen, is we can pray and we can study. We can fast. We can lay out before God and read the word of God and ask God for his wisdom and his knowledge. Because the Bible says what? He that lacketh wisdom, ask of God, who what? Who gives it liberally. God, give me your wisdom. God, give me deeper understanding of who you are. Give me deeper understanding of your purpose and your will for my life as the church. That's why the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And the only way that we can do that is we've got to stay on our knees. We've got to push the plate back and we've got to stay in the word of God. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. So he says what? In verse number nine, that to cease not to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. Don't pray. Amen. We, we, we want to pray for uh, material things, uh, houses and, and, and financial blessings and, and all these material things. But man, I want the wisdom of God. You want the wisdom of God as his church. I want all that God has in store for me in the spirit realm. God, bless me spiritually. Give me spiritual revelation of, of who you are. Continue to open up yourself to me in your word so I can understand who you are, so I can be a witness in, in, and give a testimony to people about the God that I serve. I want people to understand, to understand and know that Jesus is God manifested in flesh. I want people to understand and know that when I open my mouth and I testify about the God that I serve, that they will get revelation of who he is and become one of his. Did you catch that? Get revelation of who he is so that they can become one of his. That's how we became one of his. We got revelation. Because without revelation, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Amen. Without revelation, we would still be out there stuck in sin, doing what we want to do, lost, 
could be talking to trees, no telling where we could be. Amen. But because we got revelation through somebody's testimony or because we got revelation through the gospel being preached, look at us now. Amen. We, he has called us out of darkness and now we're walking in that marvelous light. Oh, God. Somebody shout. Oh, never mind. You can't. Somebody type in there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are part of the body of Christ. I am a part of the body of Christ. So the, the heart of the church, amen, is, is to, to love one another. The heart of the church is to pray for one another. The heart of the church is to have compassion. The heart of the church, amen, is to be there one that be there for one another. Amen. If I need you, amen, I should be able to depend and say, hey, all I need to do is call. Call Brother Terry, and he's going to be there for me. And I can call him, and he, I can talk to him, amen, and he's going to pray with me, and he's going to encourage me. Because why? Because we are both part of the body of Christ. I am his brother. Oh, oh hallelujah. Thank you, Mahogany. Amen. 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 So, so, so he says, no, what he said? Now, verse number 10, he says that, you, verse number 9. He says that ye may might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Oh, the God that we serve is a deep God. He's deep. There are things about God that, that, that we will never know. I think I can say that. Amen. Because our God is so deep. Amen. He's so deep. He's so powerful. He, he's so awesome that, that, that the only way we can get understanding of who he is is through prayer and studying his word. So he says that, 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 that with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10. Now, this is why. This is why, amen, we need the wisdom of God. This is why we need the spiritual understanding of God. Because verse number 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See why I need you to pray for me? See why we need to pray one for another? Because we, as I said before, we have an adversary that's trying to take us out. He's trying to stop us, hinder us from getting what God has for us. He, look at what he says, that ye might walk worthy. Yes, we must walk worthy. Amen. Somebody died for us to be part of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ died for you. He died for me so that we can be part of his body. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God did this for you. God did this for me. Amen. So that, so that now that we are part of the body of Christ, now that we are saved and sanctified, uh, Holy Ghost filled, Amen. And have the anointed power of the Holy Ghost down on the inside. We must walk worthy. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm asking you to do a lot of typing. I wish I could say, tell you to say hallelujah. Type in there. Walk worthy. Walk worthy. Walk worthy. Amen. We're the body of Christ. I must walk worthy to God. I must walk, I must walk in holiness. I must not walk slew footed. I can't be, be, be one foot in and one foot out. I can't live holy on Sunday and live any kind of way, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Saturday. No, I must walk worthy of Jesus Christ because he died for me. You must walk worthy of Jesus Christ because he died for you. God says what? Be ye holy. Why? Because I'm holy. Oh, hallelujah. 
And therefore, since God is holy uh, uh, and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to make me holy and to make us holy, the body of Christ holy, then we must walk worthy. I, as I said before, I can't walk with one foot in the church and one foot out. Can't do it. Can't say, uh, uh, I love God, whom I have never seen, and not love my brother and my sister. Can't do it. Can't do it. So see what he said, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I don't know if you have your Bibles, but underline that all pleasing. I'm, I, we've got to, as the body of Christ, we must be pleasing to God 24 hours a day. 24, as long as our eyes are open, as long as God gives breath to our bodies, when he, he, we, must do, we, we must be pleasing to him. Do, I, I, was, I was looking at a, at a Bible study, and I, then I switched to this one, and I was going to teach on the subject uh, obedience to God. And, 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 and I was going to come from 1 Samuel. And I was going to talk about Saul. And, but, and, and the, the, what I was going to look at, the scripture that says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. See, uh, we, we must be, and all pleasing means for us to be obedient to God in every area of our lives. I don't want to come, let me put it this, I don't want to come to church and praise God on Sunday and then go out in the world and do, do what I want to do. That's hypocritical. That's hypocritical. That's, that's living a life, uh, I don't want, here we go, I don't want to live a life of, of uh, uh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Why? Because God has been too good to me. If we say if God doesn't do anything else, he's done enough. Ah, that's a good saying. That's a good saying. He has. But I don't want God to stop blessing me, if, if that makes sense to you. He's done, he's, he, he's been good to me. But my desire is God keep on blessing me. As long as I, you give me breath to breathe, yeah, keep on blessing me. Yeah, God has done enough. If he doesn't do anything else, he's done enough. No, no, no. I don't agree with that. But anyway, that's another, that's another subject. Because uh, if, if God stops blessing me, uh-oh, can I put it this, how am I, ooh, am I going to get myself in trouble? If God stops blessing me, he's going to stop being God to me. Oh, dear. <laughs> because God is a God that never stops. God is a God that never fails. Therefore, if he stops blessing me, something's wrong with God. Oh, let me get back to the lesson. Uh, mm. So, so when we look at verse number 10, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, notice what it says, being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Every being fruitful in every Good work. In other words, God, whatever I do, I want you to get the glory out of my life. I want you to get the glory while I'm on my job. I want you to get the glory while I'm in my home. Wherever I go, whatever I do, whatever I say, God, I want you to get the glory out of me. Yes, yes, get the glory out of my life. 
Because notice what he says. He says, and in, 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 I think it's, he says, uh, because I have created you, oh, for my glory. Oh, now, if I've been, if we've been created for God's glory, then we must allow God to do what he wants to do in our lives. Okay, let me say that again. If we want God to get the glory out of our lives, we must, sur let me, there we go. We must surrender to the will of God and let God do what he wants to do in our lives. Uh, Pastor Deary, amen, God bless you, sir. You always sing that song. Uh, what God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. In other words, God, use me in any way that you see fit. I surrender to your divine will. I say yes to you. Use me in the way that you see fit. Stir up the gift that's in me. If you want me to preach, I will preach. If you want me to teach, I will teach. If you want me to pray, I will pray. Whatever you want me to do, in this season, use me so that you can get the glory out of my life. Now, ooh, type in there, somebody. I see you. I see you, Elder Shepherd. Amen. Somebody type in there. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, no, type in there. Use me, Lord. Yeah, that's it. Use me, Lord. Amen. So, so. God, so that we can increase in knowledge. Now, verse 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, here we go. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Let's, let's, we better stop right there and, and work with that for a moment. Strengthened with all might. God told Paul, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, all of us is relying on the grace of God. We are relying on the grace of God because we realize and understand that if it wasn't for his grace, where would we be? Therefore, we, we surrender our strength and we bring our weaknesses to God and God then in returns strengthens us. God, I'm relying on your grace because of what I'm going through. And I'm holding on to your holding on to you for your strength so that you can carry me through. I pray that she doesn't get upset with me. My wife has been going through a struggle with her with her health, uh, and 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 we've been relying on the grace of God. And the more we lie rely on the grace of God, the more I see God strengthening her. And in the midst of relying on His grace, and Him strengthening her. She's being 
heal. Ah, did you catch that? What she was a week ago, through the grace of God, she is a lot better today. Because we relied on the grace of God and he gave her strength to endure and now she's better than what she was a week ago. So my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in weakness. So strengthen in all might. I've got to be strengthened in the spirit, in the, in the spirit man. Not lifting weights and be and be getting muscle bound. No, strengthen in the spirit realm. Strengthen in my spirit man. My spirit man is 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 the, what's being attacked by the enemy. My spirit man is what what is what the what the demons are trying to get to. My spirit man is what is what I need strength in. Therefore, I rely on the grace of God and I pray, amen, that God will give me the strength each and every day. We need the grace of God and the strength of God every time we walk out the door. Yes. Oh, God help us. So, so we, 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 we need his strength and all might according to his, his glorious power. Yes. Now, his glorious power. Uh, his glorious power that dwells within us, which is known as the Holy Ghost. Uh, we have, that's what strengthens our inner man. That's what gives our inner man the endurance, amen, to hold on until God brings deliverance. That's what gives us our spirit man, amen, the, the anointing and the power, amen, to, to, to rebuke the enemy and to, to, to make the devils flee. Amen. Because of the, what's going on in the spirit, man. If I don't fast, if we don't fast and pray, if we don't read the word of God, amen, we can never, the spirit, man, amen, will just die away. It will just fade away. But the more we read the word of God, the more we study the word of God, the more we pray, the more we stay on our face, the more we fast, the more is the more we get strengthened in the inner man. That's why he says, strengthen with all might according to the glorious power unto now. <laughs> strengthen unto the glorious power unto all patience and long suffering. Oh. I, 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 that's, that's key. Patience. And long suffering. Let me say that again. Patience and long suffering. He, we, 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 we use this. We, we use the phrase. He may not come when you want him, but he's always. And I've used it, but he's always on time. But the question is, when you're going through your test and your trial, do you really have the patience and the long suffering to wait until God shows up? One of the things that, that, has, that has amazed me in the Bible Is, is in the Gospels is the amount of time that some of the people in the Bible had to wait for their deliverance. How long they had to wait for their healing. Twelve long years the woman with the issue of blood. The child from his birth was being tormented by devils. The man at the pool of Bethesda, everybody had to have patience 
and had to be long suffering for their deliverance. And that's the way that we have to be. We have to have patience and we have to be long suffering and wait for God to do what he's going to do. Uh, we can't rush God. We, we can't, we can't uh, uh, help God out. We just must wait until God sends our healing. Wait till God sends our deliverance. Wait. Have patience until God is going to do what he's going to do in our lives. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Uh, uh, it was, it was, it was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be truthful. It was hard for me to be joyful to seeing my wife in pain that she was. Hearing her moan and hearing her going through what she was going through. But God still gave me joy because I knew that God is able to heal her and to bring her out. Oh, so we must be patient, long-suffering, with joyfulness. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, he says, be strengthened with might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us to meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. In light. What time is it? Uh oh, because I'm fitting to get happy here. N Notice this. Now let's go back to 10. That we must walk worthy. We must, we must be fruitful in every good work. We must be increasing in the knowledge of God. We must be strengthened with all might. And we must have patience and be long suffering with joyfulness. Why? Giving thanks unto the Father who has made who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So so it is well worth we may have to cry sometimes, we may have to do without sometimes. But God is always there. And because he's always there and what he has in store for us and what he has prepared for us, we must still with joyfulness give God thanks. Why? Because he has made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Oh, God. How did he do that? Now, let's work, let's work with that for a minute. How did God do that? How did he make us partakers of the inheritance in the saints of light? He did it by sending his only begotten son who died on Calvary's cross for your sins and mine. And once we became partakers of the new birth, now we are partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh, God. In other words, amen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creature, new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, I no longer walk in darkness, but we, or let me put it this way. We no longer walk in darkness, but now we walk in light. Oh, God. God, if I turn off all the lights in this building, in, in, my, in my house, amen, I'm in darkness. 
I, I might walk into something, uh, uh, I don't know where I'm going, can't see my way, but once I turn on the light, my God from glory, I can see where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I won't be able to stumble into nothing. I won't run into nothing. I won't stumble and fall because I now I'm walking in the light and I've got my direction in which way I'm going and I'm going to keep walking in light till I get to my destination. Uh-oh. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Until I get to my destination. Ah, so he's made us partakers of the children of light. We no longer walk in darkness. We are the children of light. Amen. Now, no man, as the scripture said, we don't, no man hides a light under a bushel. But no, I'm not, I'm not going to hide. Amen. No matter what I've got to go through, I'm not going to hide. Because why? I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm walking in the light. I'm the representative of God. God, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If he's down on the inside of us, now we are the light of the world. We're not walking in darkness. We're not stumbling. We're not falling. We're not walking in the direction that we don't want to go. And then we know where we're going. We are walking up the king's highway and we're on our way to heaven. And God, God, good God almighty. Oh, we are children of light. Hey, there is no darkness in us. We, there is no more sin in us. There, there is no more lying, no more backbiting, no more hatred, no more, no more jealousy, no more envy. Man, we are children of light. We walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. We are walking in anointing. Good God Almighty, when the devil see us coming, he ought to be afraid because we are the church. We are the magnificent children, powerful, anointed children of God. Devil, uh, watch out, watch out because I'm a child of the most high God and I got the Holy Ghost down on the inside of me. Somebody say, I got the Holy Ghost. Mm. So, what time is it? Uh oh. Give me five more minutes. Uh, amen. So, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to part be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Ah, oh, did you catch that? Inheritance of the saints in light. My children, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and leave them an, an inheritance. Uh, something, amen, that they can uh, uh, remember me by. Uh, something, amen, that will, will help them to, 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 to live a better life. And, uh, so, so we have an inheritance as the church, as the people of God. We have an inheritance. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. That's our inheritance. Our inheritance is in heaven, not on earth, but it's in heaven. Oh, God, our inher eternal life is our inheritance. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about leaving my, my children money or things like that. But amen, God, our inheritance in Christ Jesus is eternal life. For he says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I've got life right here on earth. But my God, when Jesus comes back for the church, I'm going to have eternal life. Spend eternity with Christ. You and I, amen, we are going to be spend eternity with Christ because we have an inheritance. The Bible says that is what? That's, un, that's, not, that's uncorruptible, undefiled, hidden in heaven. Oh, a incorruptible crown. Oh, oh, God, spending eternity with God. Amen. 
praising him 24 hours a day, walking in the holiness, walking in the light of God. No, never, no, not needing sunlight, but his glory is going to be the light thereof. Walking on streets of gold. Think about the inheritance that is waiting for you. Now, think about it. The body of Christ. Because of what he's got in store for us. So giving thanks unto the Father who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Okay, giving thanks unto the Father who has who has made, may have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Remember what I said? I could turn off these lights in my in my house and and, I, and walk around this house and be walking in darkness. But once I turn the light on, I'm no longer in darkness. Amen. I'm walking in the light. Amen. Huh. And so that's what God has done for us. Once we've been partakers of what Christ has done, he, who had, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. In other words, what we used to do, that what the devil had us bound in before, he no longer has, it, has us bound now because we are the children of light. God has translated us into the, into, amen, into his son, Jesus Christ. He has translated us, amen, out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us, there we go, into the kingdom of of his dear son. Isn't it amazing to know <laughs> that you are in as part of the body of Christ? You are we are in two places at one time. Let me say that again. So that I can marry. As the body of Christ, we are in two places at one time. We are in the world, but not of the world. I'm in the world earth, but I'm also in Christ. Therefore, if I'm here in the earth realm, in this natural body and Christ is seated up in heaven on the right hand of the Father and I'm in him, that tells me that I'm in two places at one time. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has put me because of the new birth experience, because I went through the new birth experience, because I've been baptized in Jesus' name, because we have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, we are now in Christ. I love, I love the scripture. Now, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I'm in Christ, I'm in the world, but I'm also in Christ. And because I'm in him, I have all the blessings of God that's in the heavenly realm. I've got joy. We've got joy. We've got peace. We've got temperance. The fruit of the spirit. All of the fruit of the spirit we have. Amen. And, 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 and most of all, we have the power of the Holy Ghost. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even, and I'm, I'm going to conclude with verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The heart of the church. That's why it's important for us to pray one for another, constantly keep each other in prayer. Because the devil wants to take us out. He don't want us to get what God has in store for us. 
He doesn't want us to spend eternity with God. And he wants us, as we're walking in this earth realm, he wants to make us make God look bad. But devil, you are a liar. The devil, we rebuke that thought, we rebuke that desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Because my, my God, because I'm going to live holy 24 hours a day because I am appreciative I'm thankful to what God has done. Amen. He has, he, amen. He has, re, through his blood, he has redeemed us. He has filled us with his spirit and he has, has a place for us in eternity. Therefore, the devil is not going to do, he can't do anything that we will not allow him to do. If I've got the power of the Holy Ghost down on the inside, I'm going to allow that power to keep me covered under the blood. I'm going to allow that power of the Holy Ghost to make me walk holy, to keep me holy, to make me love you, to make me pray for you so that you can do the same thing for me so that when God comes back for the church, we will all be made to be, to be raptured in the air. Now, oh, we can meet each other in the air. And that's my prayer for you tonight, is that you will live a life of holiness, that you will have the heart of the church, pray for all the saints, pray for one another, love one another, because that is the heart of the church. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for this lesson that we've, the words that we went through, oh God, tonight. I pray, God, that someone was encouraged. I pray that somebody was lifted. I pray that somebody's relationship with you has been elevated. Strengthen us, oh God. Keep us under the blood. Let us, oh God, as a church, represent you for who you are as holiness and love one for another and compassion. And let us pray one for another in these last and evil days. And we will give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. God bless.